He honore ki te atua, ka nui te mihi, ki te hahi rā tāna. Ki a manu ao, mena mōrahu, a ki te mana whenua. E ngā ranga tira, e ngā iwi, e ngā reo, tēnā koutou katoa. He tino mihi, ki a kingi tu heitia, tā tumu hoki. Ka huri nā whakaaro, ki a harirangi, ki a tāwira hori. Hoki, e ngā mātei moe mai. Te hanga ora, tēnā tātou. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for being patient with my reo. Uh, it is a work in progress, as you can clearly see, but I am determined to keep going with it. But it is a genuine and real great honour and privilege to be here with you today. And I want to say thank you for the incredibly warm welcome uh, that I have experienced coming here as the first time as the new leader of the National Party. It's even more special when I think about being here on the 150th anniversary of Tahu Potaki Widamun Ratana. I also want to acknowledge other political leaders that are here Adrian Rurafi, Kiri Tapo Allen, uh, Rawari Waititi, Debbie Naura Paka. I also want to acknowledge my deputy Nicola Willis and all my parliamentary colleagues that are here with us today. It's an opportunity for me to talk a little bit as a new leader about what I imagine a partnership between a future national government and Māori will look like. Because I think we start feeling incredibly proud of the partnership that we've had. I appreciated the education that you gave me earlier in your remarks. Uh, thank you for that. But I think when I look back, it's a, it's a partnership that we can be proud of. My legendary MPs like Sir Aparana Nata, but I also think about Pākehā MPs who care deeply about the aspiration and ambitions of Māori. I think about Duncan McIntyre and his advocacy of te reo. I think about the bravery of Jim Bolger and Doug Graham to commence a treaty settlement process. I think about the great passion of Chris Finlayson to complete that process and to work tirelessly to complete settlements. And I also think today about Bill English, who really believed in providing a cornerstone relationship between the Crown and Iwi and took strengthening that incredibly seriously. And I think under national governments, the Māori economy was booming, and that economic platform provided an opportunity for social change and progress as a result. And I'm also proud about the innovations that we have developed together, when I think about Kohanga Reo, when I think about Fano Ora, innovations that were delivered within the coherency of a single system of delivery of public service. But I also come here today acknowledging as a new leader who's been in political life for just two years that we have work to do in the National Party. We are a party that had a poor election result. We did not have the diversity that we want to have going forward. But I'm incredibly proud of the progress that we've made and I'm proud of the candidates that we'll take to the election in 2023. I think all of us, irrespective of our politics, come to political life because we want to do public service. And in my case, in the National Party's case, I want you to understand that we care deeply about people. We want to see all Kiwis flourishing, Māori or non-Māori. I could identify incredibly strongly with your remarks about making sure that our children are actually set up for success and have opportunities that we didn't have and how we move the arc of their experience forward. But I want you to be under no illusion. We are a party that is ruthlessly focused on getting things done and securing outcomes because that is how we improve the daily lives of Kiwis across the country. So I want to give you sort of three big sort of macro thoughts about how a future national government will think about it. The first is that we believe really deeply in strong, good economic management and stewardship. We think that really matters. And right now, there are too many Kiwis that are struggling. They're struggling to simply keep going. And when you think about it, the cost of living is too high. We've seen cost of food at all times highs. At this time of the year, we see the cost of school uniforms and stationery. We see rent and housing sky high, and we see it's crippling families. It's causing huge pain and suffering, the economic situation. And I'll be honest, from my perspective, Labor has spent more money, hired more bureaucrats, and delivered worse outcomes. Our economy's going backwards. Our housing crisis hasn't been solved. Our education standards are slipping. You know, you look at our, our crime situation is getting worse, and we certainly have 
um, a health crisis where it's falling apart before our eyes. And those outcomes, whether you're Māori or non-Māori, they're the same five things that everyone cares deeply and puts at the top of their list. So I want to tell you that we are going to demonstrate our kindness and we're going to demonstrate that we care by making sure that we are great stewards of the economy and in doing so, reduce the cost of living and raise incomes for all. The second thing I'd say about the National Party is that we believe very deeply in creating an equality of opportunity. We don't believe in equality of outcomes. We think that people work hard. Uh, they should be able to have the rewards of their success. But we do believe really strongly that five-year-olds in this country, irrespective of their circumstances, should set off with an ability to realise their version of the Kiwi dream, whatever that may be. And we have work to do to make sure that all those five-year-olds get to the start line uh, and are able to actually take education and health and be able to move their lives forwards in the ways that they do. And so underpinning all our social policies, we have recommitted to Bill English's social investment model, a means by which we make powerful, targeted interventions to be able to lift people up, to be able to get them to that start line. That is really critical for us because that's how our kids doing better at school have more opportunities ahead of them. That's how when we free people up from welfare, they get more choices and freedom about how they get to live their life. That's how we move young people away from a life of crime to one of more fulfilment. And the final thought for you is that we believe in localism and devolution. We don't believe in centralisation and control like this government. We think that there are three actors in society. There is government setting up the framework, local and central. There is community and iwi organisations and Māori organisations that see the pain, the hurt, the frustration and the need and are best to deliver a lot of those services to improve the outcomes. And we see businesses that can play a role and move with great speed and scale. Three actors with complementary but different uh, expertise that need to work together, partner together, in order to deliver improved outcomes. So I guess that thought of localism and devolution brings us to the big topic of the day and of the last few years, which has been that word co-governance. And I would say to you, I think it has been quite a divisive and immature conversation over recent years. And I personally think it's because the government hasn't been upfront or transparent with the New Zealand people about where it's going and what it's doing. And I believe in constitutional issues, you actually spend your political capital, you make your case and you take people with you. We saw that with Jim Bolger, we saw it with Doug Graham. They made their case, they spent their capital, they took people with them. There was massive generosity of spirit as a result on both sides and we should be incredibly proud of that treaty settlement process because no other country on planet Earth has been able to achieve anything like that as a means of starting reconciliation and partnership. But I think the challenge from our point of view is that the government has actually confused the word co-governance and moved it from one context to another context. And that is the creation of new, big central bureaucracies delivering public services. So I want to be clear, and I have to level with you, National does oppose co-governance in the delivery of public services. We believe in a single, coherent system, not one system for Māori and another system for non-Māori, for the delivery of public services. Things like health and education and justice and for critical infrastructure like Three Waters. And we support the targeting of people and their needs on the basis of needs, not ethnicity, in order to secure improved outcomes. And I appreciate that might be difficult news, but I want to explain the context for where we're coming from on that, because it doesn't mean that we don't want Māori involved in decision-making and partnering with Māori. We have a principal objection because New Zealand has one government. It's elected by all of us, it's accountable to all of us, and its public services are available to anyone who needs them. But no matter where they're from and what their backgrounds may be. And we have a very practical objection, which is that we don't believe bureaucracy and centralisation and amalgamation is the way in which we deliver better outcomes. We believe empowering community, iwi, Māori organisations locally, devolving that is the way in which we can achieve it. So we do oppose the, 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 the co-governance of public services. But that doesn't mean that there's only one way of providing those services or delivering those services. We believe strongly that community organisations are best placed to deliver those services to improve those outcomes. And that's the role where Māori will have a massive role and will continue to have a huge role in a national government. Charter schools, Kohanga Reo, Whana Ora are all examples of what I'm talking about. Innovations delivered by, by Māori for Māori, but within the coherence of a single system of delivery for public services. 
So I want to say in closing, I think we have a fantastic country. We have huge opportunities before all of us. If you were to design a country and put it anywhere in the world, you put it where Aotearoa New Zealand sits today. We have huge opportunities. But it will require a national government to actually get things done so we can improve those outcomes and realise all of that potential that we have. We are going to show that we care by managing our economy incredibly seriously and as good stewards of the economy. And while we oppose co-governance of public services we've just discussed, uh, we want you, I want you to know that the National Party wants a New Zealand where Māori success is New Zealand's success. And my commitment to you is to partner, to understand, to trust and to listen uh, as I learn more about uh, how we can partner together. But I want you to understand we are here to improve outcomes, we are here to get things done because that is what New Zealand needs and we will do that with you and for you. So can I say thank you again for today. Thank you for the opportunities to be able to have this conversation. Uh, building understanding, being able to walk across the room, being able to disagree without being disagreeable, maintaining civility in our politics is really important. It's been a hallmark of our history together and it needs to continue as we go forward. Nore rā, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Thank you.